G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews, a follow-up on the last video with the Mini Talon. Excuse me while I get all this rubbish out of the way. The Mini Talon Pulse Jet Powered Mini Talon. Here it is, look, look, huge, huge. It's affecting the folk, the exposure, isn't it? It looks terrible, I should have fixed the exposure, never mind. Uh, this model here, a lot of feedback, a lot of feedback on the unsuccessful attempt to fly it last weekend. And I'm going to go through some of that feedback now from the interwebs on that video and explain why a lot of suggestions very good suggestions are not really practical and the solutions I've come up with to fix the problem of fuel draw on this model. Let's go to the interwebs and see what people are saying. Now my apologies that this isn't actually a screen capture it's just my camera aimed at the laptop so you can see my finger and everything okay. Now we've got some people here. Um, Scott Hildebrand said you know an easy way to fix the issue is to pick up second-hand pulse jet and run one under each wing. Well, no, probably not actually. Uh, <laughs> and this also speaks to the suggestions that the pulse jet should be mounted under the model. Unfortunately, not a good idea. Why not? Well, as we all know, heat rises. So if you put the pulse jet under the model, the heat will rise up and melt it. One of the benefits of putting it on the top is that the heat rises up away from the model so you're less likely to get it melting especially during those critical first few seconds when you've got the motor running you're disconnecting leads and you're getting ready to throw it also if you mounted the motor underneath it'd be very hard to throw because you'd have nothing to hold on to without leaving blisters on your hands now a lot of other folks suggested that i pressurize the fuel tank and again although this sounds like a good idea you know use a, a balloon or some kind of gas canister to pressurize the fuel tank Really, it's not a safe idea. One of the problems is that if the model was to crash, that, that is to say if I let someone else fly it, because I'd never crash it, but if, if it was to crash and we had a situation where the fuel line was ruptured, even if just the motor was sitting there and there was pressure constantly pushing fuel out into the motor and the motor stopped, then you've got liquid fuel, red hot stainless steel metal, instant combustion, and you've got a real fire on your hands. This only has about a 400 milliliter fuel tank, but that would be enough fuel constantly poured out onto EPO. You'd have a real fireball. So from a safety perspective, eh, it's not such a good idea. Nor is it a good idea because we're using a just a cheap RC model tank. And sometimes they split. You pressurize that even a few pounds per square inch. And if it splits, it's going to spew petrol into the body of the plane. And with that engine on the top, you could have a fireball in the sky. Not a good look. So yeah, we can't pressurize the fuel system using an external anything other than the motor. I did mention maybe put a tap on the motor, a pressure tap on the combustion chamber, so it's like a muffler on a on a glow or a nitro motor. The actual combustion pressure pressurizes the fuel so that if the motor stops, the combustion pressure disappears and the fuel doesn't keep flowing out. But even that's not without its risks because it takes a while for the combustion pressure to bleed off through from the tank when the engine stops. So I did come up with an idea and another reader left a comment with pretty much the same idea. I'll show you what it is. Now Mike Ratcliffe and a few others suggested a small pump and a regulator and I really wanted to steer away from this because little pumps can be expensive and they add weight. You've got to have the pump and a battery and a method of controlling it and then a fuel regulator. But that's what I've decided to do at least initially just to make sure the whole concept is viable and flyable. It makes it easy to get it flying because I've got those bits and once I've got it flying, if it proves to be worthwhile, then I'll go back and look at other options like combustion chamber pressure, relocating the tank or whatever. So what I'm going to do now is show you the bits I'm going to use to achieve this fuel pump and regulator setup. Right, first up we need some kind of fuel pump. And look, I just happen to have one of these. And people who have, um, have been involved in the hobby for a while and looked at turbines back, I don't know, maybe four, five, six years ago, will recognize this pump and they will shudder and cringe and feel fear for their lives because, if I can get it out of the damn bag, look at the brand on this, come on, get out of there. Look at the brand on this pump. Yes, it is a Jet Joe. <laughs> now, for those who don't know, Jet Joe was a Chinese company that set up to create ultra low cost turbines for RC models out of China. It was a bit of a fail, actually. The, their motors were not particularly reliable or um, high quality. And I don't think they're still around. If they are, I haven't heard of them for a long time. But yeah, this was one of their fuel pumps. And honestly, they're crap. <laughs> they really are crap. But this isn't a turbine. This is just a little pulse jet. And so it doesn't need a, a really high quality pump. Um, I think I picked this up for like $35. Now, you can also use a different kind of pump. I think I've got one. Hold on. I'll go and look for it and we'll do a jump cut. Ta-da. There you go. This is a, um, I think it's a smoke. No, it could be a fuel pump. I can't remember. I bought it, I think, from SDS Hobby before I fell out of love with them because they screwed me. Um, it is, it doesn't say in the box, it's all, it's all worn out. It's in Chinese anyway, but it's basically another pump. 
electric motor, horrible DC motor, yuck. But you can see it's quite a bit gruntier than this little tiny pump here. And that would be an issue because it would pump too much stuff. Um, that would be a, a real problem because it would just basically overpressurize and stall, I think. But there's that one. Uh, you can't use the little pumps that we would use normally to fuel up your nitro model because most of them are not rated for petrol or gasoline. They're rated for methanol and they'll dissolve if you put petrol in them. So if you can get one that has a rating for petrol, then you can use it. But otherwise, you'd have to use a metal gear pump. Now, see, these are all metal. This is all metal. Um, a lot of the cheaper pumps have nylon parts, and the nylon parts will get kind of soggy and sticky and melt, so can't use those. As I say, this is a bit of overkill because it's also quite heavy. It's nice and light. But, but don't buy an expensive turbine pump. They're like hundreds of dollars for a pump that size. Crazy, crazy prices. I don't know why, but they are. Um, could use this. Now, what I'm also going to use is what we call a demand regulator. And here it is. I'll move this out of the way. There is a demand regulator regulator. This one is an iron bay demand regulator and if I turn it over you see something very familiar. If you've used gas motors you'll recognize that. That's often seen on the bottom of the carburetor of a gas motor and in fact this is exactly what you find on the bottom of a gas motor because we all know gas motors they have a little diaphragm pump in them and you can put the tank miles away and they don't worry about fuel head very much at all. You know it doesn't matter whether you point the nose up or down they just keep running because they have got one of these demand regulators in here. And this one, um, there's another one called the Klein Regulator. I don't know if you can buy them anymore. They were plastic and they work as well, but the, the Iron Bay one is actually made out of carburetor parts. Obviously, they've machined up this blue part, the standardized blue part, and then they just use bits out of a um, Walbro carb or something on the back. So it's a really good idea, really. But they're not cheap. Um, well, they are cheap compared to some other things, but I think this was about 35 bucks, 40 bucks. So it is a, adds a bit of price to the model. Now, demand regulators are really, really super cool things. Uh, this pipe here, which goes off to the, where are we, got to look at it, this goes off to the tank, so the fuel comes in the big pipe, comes out the little pipe. The interesting thing is that you can blow as much as you want into this pipe and nothing comes out there. Yet as soon as you suck on here, the fuel goes through. It kind of, it won't let fuel through until there's suction and even then it regulates it so there's always a constant head here regardless of what the fuel pressure is on this side. It's really clever piece of device, so that's going to be paramount to getting our little jet going is to have a high pressure or higher pressure coming in here from a fuel pump and then a demand pressure out here because if we just hook the pump up to the post jet engine then it'll be very difficult because keeping the pump pressure constant as the uh, battery goes down and as the fuel tank level changes it would still be kind of problematic. This should give us a 100% reliable fuel throw, fuel flow because it has constant fuel pressure through the motor. So that's going to be really interesting. I know a lot of, uh, in the old Dynajet days, they used to use the Klein regulators as a demand regulator and some form of pressure in the tank. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, now, obviously, there are some other things that need to be done. Excuse me while I pull out a bit here. Oops, want to go that. don't want to look at the mess, do you? No, there you go. Um, I'm going to have to drive this pump in some way, and I don't want the pump stalled because what will happen, of course, is that if the motor is just sitting there while we're trying to start it up, uh, the pump will stall because it's trying to push fuel into a hole which isn't going to accept it. So it'll stall, draw lots of current, and probably burn out the ESC. So I'm going to have to do something, make a little bypass system. So I'll probably have the tube going off to here, and then I'll have a bypass which will send fuel back into the tank so that we have a pressure. But if there's no flow, then it just recycles the fuel. That happens on car engines a lot, on cars, automobiles, because they have a similar system where they have a pump that's constantly pushing pressure, and it has a bypass, pressure bypass goes back into a reservoir. So... It'll be a bit of plumbing, I'm afraid, but the goal at this stage is not to, this won't be producing something that you might want to duplicate. It'll just be proving that the pulse jet can power the model, the model flies okay, it's got enough power, it's controllable. Once we've proven that, if we prove that, then I will refine this whole system and we'll come up with something much simpler, cheaper and easier to set up. But to be honest, this is the cheapest, easiest and simplest solution for me right at the moment. So stay tuned. Uh, the pulse jet, there's another fine weekend coming up. So I'll be working over the next few days through the rain and storms and remnants of a tropical cyclone that are battering us at the moment to get this going. So yeah, uh, stay tuned. You too could have a pulse jet powered model for under 200, or a jet powered model for under 200 bucks. You never know your luck. Questions, comments, the usual place. Um, thank you for those people who have commented so far. Your comments are always welcome. And even though, as I said, some of them are not actually practical in this case, I love reading them and uh, everyone learns from the input of others. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Oh, thumbs up if you can. Bye.